Hello, happy Wednesday. Thanks for coming in, everyone. Uh, we are working on our hourglass, hourglass quilt some more. Uh, we're going to do more of a little patchworky one like this. So we have all of our little quarter square triangles made. Uh, tonight we're going to press them and then start sewing them into the actual hourglass blocks. I'm hoping we get that far tonight. It'll be fun. We'll get to sort all these and, and pick really neat combinations. I am shooting for more of a patchworky thing like this. So that is the plan for tonight. Uh, thanks for coming in, guys. I see you starting to pop in. Thank you, replay viewers, for coming in as well. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. Uh, you can find me at penguinandfish.com. Uh, if you guys know anyone who wants to make this quilt with us, please share this video or one of the uh, videos prior when we started it. I think uh, yesterday or the day before would probably be a good one uh, just to get, get started with the process here. Uh, and uh, I would appreciate that. I'm going to I'm gonna share this right now with the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Uh, if you want to get in there to share what you're working on or chat with us, uh, I did put the link in the, uh, in the description today. So I will uh, do that now. Uh, it looks like some people might ha be having uh, issues again tonight. Hopefully we'll go okay. Uh, I'm going to share right now. So uh, I'll let you guys see if uh, you can get it working. Try closing uh, Facebook. Sometimes you have to uninstall it completely and then enter it again. Uh, I will share right now. Let's refresh. I know there's some people in the pen penguin and fish crafters group that uh, will want to see too. So share. Thanks for bearing with me guys when I share. Uh, let me know if you are starting this, uh, the hourglass quilt. I would love, love to hear. Share in a group. Okay. There we are. Oh, you guys are frozen, not working. So I have it coming up on on my end. I have internet open here. So Wanda is working for you. Yeah, it seems so random because, like I said, uh, I just I I have internet open here and I can see it working working okay. So you know what? I'm gonna just continue. Uh, the replay will work fine, and I know some of you guys, it is working, so, okay, good. I'm going to just keep going, so thanks again, guys. Let's hope Facebook gets it together, because it seems too random for it to be, like, one of us, right? <laughs> so I'm going to flip you guys around, and we'll get started. Uh, thanks again for joining. Oop, sorry. There we go. Okay, guys, we have our giant, giant stack of triangles that we made yesterday. So step one, uh, we will press them all. I'm going to press them all to the dark side so that when we sew them together, we will have nested seams the entire time. So first, let's press with a little kitty towel. I'm going to press all of them, and then I think I'll sort them when I'm done. I could probably sort them as I go, but I tend to mess up if I'm doing more than one step at once, so I'm just going to go slow, one at a time. So this is the part <laughs> where I feel like I always forget what a big step pressing is. <laughs> I think, oh, I'll just cut and then I can sew right away, but it's always, always a thing a time suck doing all the, the pressing. But I've kind of learned a little bit to, to go with it, like to enjoy it a little bit. Um, <laughs> that is definitely a learned trait. I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, I know, I know there's, like what part of quilting do you guys like and what part do you kind of despise? Like I know a lot of people don't like working on a binding of a quilt, but I kind of love that part. Frozen New Orleans. All right, yeah. Check back 
in a few minutes, hopefully it starts working. I do have the air on, so it's not so ungodly hot here. Um, well, I, although I did just turn it on, so I'm hoping that cools all this enough, if that's part of the issue, but I don't know. Ooh, that's cute. I like those two together. All right, cruising through these steps. But yeah, pressing, you know, it's probably a tie between pressing and cutting uh, for my least favorite parts of sewing. <laughs> but I do, I do love putting a binding on. That means you're at the last step and you're just about done. To be fair, I get used to the idea of pressing every scene. Mm -hmm. That's your, you have it like at the nail on the head, Linda. That's exactly how I feel. I used to, you know, hate the idea of pressing every scene, but now it's just part of the process and I just gotta chill and kind of go with it. You don't like cutting? Yeah, that's, that's the same with me too. That's, it's the pressing and the cutting. Although I have learned to kind of live with the pressing a little bit. Well, and the cutting, obviously, because I gotta do both of them. But I'd rather be doing other things for sure. Oh, your least favorite is sandwiching. Yeah, you know what? Sandwiching is a lot of being on the ground. But I do, you know what? I like sandwiching because everything's all of a sudden basted together. And I love that. It's like the first essence of it being a quilt for me. So I actually don't mind sandwiching very much. You know, like cutting. Can't get the seam cut right no matter how hard I try. Uh, I hear you, Bonnie. Uh, what really helped, uh, you know, cutting was tough for me, but one of the things that helped me so much, and this was one of the things that, that I uh, started using on uh, when I was in the Splendid Sampler doing uh, my Splendid Sampler quilt, was those, oh, I'm gonna forget what they're called again, but those little sticky circles that you put at the bottom, on the bottom of your ruler. Oh my gosh, we just talked about these and I forget what it is again. Oh, you pick up your Splendid Sampler from the quilter today. Oh my gosh. Pam, tell us how it looks. That is so exciting. So all you have to do is is the binding yet. Nice! You're almost done. Isn't that crazy? Are you just completely, are you gonna like do the entire binding in one night? I think I'd probably have to if I got it back and that was my only last step. I would just stay up and bind until that thing was done. True Grips, that's it. Thanks Belinda. Yeah, so True Grips are those stickers that you can put on the like little rubber plasticky stickers that you can put on the bottom of your ruler and holy cow that really did help me um, with the cutting because my ruler just won't go anywhere. Yeah sandwiching is you know that being on the ground on your knees that's not fun for sure. I always kind of wanted to get those knee pads that they make that I think are just like normal knee pads but they're marketed towards quilters. I haven't tried ever sandwiching a quilt on a table before. Um, you know, I know some people do that, but I just, I just don't know how that would work if you had, if you didn't lay out your entire quilt on one flat surface. I, I don't know. Gosh, I do not know if our pile's getting any smaller. Let's see, each pair, there were 12 pairs, and each pair made 12 pairs of eight inch blocks, and each pair made eight of these little triangles. Um, so what's 12 times eight? <laughs> 80 plus 16, 96, does that sound? Like real math, I don't know. <laughs> so let's pretend that that's actual math. You guys can tell me if my math is wrong, but that means we have 96 of these little pairings that we're that we're pressing. Although we did 
do six yesterday, so 90. 90 of these little guys we are pressing tonight. Oops. Can that be right? That seems like crazy town. I'm doing that math in my head, and it's the evening when math doesn't work anymore for me, so <laughs> I might be wrong. Although this feels like a pile of 90. I should have gone with the big squares, huh, instead of these little ones. I don't think so. I, th I think it's going to be really cute with all these little four inch. These will end up being four inch um, little hourglasses. Alternate pressing a few and sewing a few. Yeah, I'm kind of just doing the whole thing assembly line just because then I don't have to move around as much. I know it's not as fun when we're just here pressing. Uh, but I like the idea of I'm going to put all of, you know, they have like one's light to dark and one's dark to light. I'm going to put all of those in their own piles and then we can start grabbing and, and putting them together kind of randomly. Uh, that's, that's what I'm going to go for is the randomness. So I want to make sure that it's kind of mixed up sufficiently. And if I put them together now, there's, there's pieces at the bottom of this that um, wouldn't get paired up, I don't think. Oh, you enjoy ironing clothes. Oh, man. You don't mind the pressing part. You enjoy ironing, cl ironing clothes. Evening, you're here and had to go to, oh, you had to go to the desktop because the iPad's not working. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad uh, a lot of you guys are it's still working for, for you. Technology yet, I think, is just, it's just not perfect yet. Ooh, this one's pretty. It's, kind of it's super fun. Um, some of you guys have been sharing in our Penguin and Fish Crafters group, uh, sharing your hour blocks or the, the, uh, fabrics that you chose and, and all that. That is so fun to see, uh, to see what you guys are doing with yours. Um, I think I'm going to end up doing mine really mix and matchy. Even though it looks really fun uniform and stuff too, these, these blocks, but this one's going to be patchworky. Or, you know, I think our pressed pile is starting to be taller than our unpressed pile. You do get in a rhythm. Uh, I haven't, I don't often, actually now that I think about it, I don't think ever really, I don't think I've ever made a quilt that is just blocks repeated. <laughs> Which sounds crazy to me that I haven't done that, but I always have like some more sort of motif going on or like the splendid sampler. That was my first big sampler where it was a whole pile of blocks. But there's something about doing a quilt that's all the same block like we're doing here. I mean, you get this whole rhythmic thing going where, you, where you're just doing the same step for a period of time. And that's really feels good. It's really meditative. You use an Accu quilt cutter. Oh, for your two and a half inch strips. Oh, for, uh, for, like, for binding? Because that's pretty sweet. Oh, for, for anything to, to get your, um, to have more, more accuracy in your cutting. I see. I have not used one of those ever, an Accu, Accu quilt. I do have access to one of those Accu quilt ghosts. I think that's what they're called, right? Those the smaller ones. I haven't tried it out ever. Should, should we do that? 
smaller than squares, a triangle forever. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Bernice. It is protecting my new-ish uh, ironing board. Uh, if you guys have been here with the with me for the splendid sampler, my splendid sampler videos, <laughs> you know my poor my poor little ironing board got more and more burnt and gross as we went along. Just I think mostly from the starch I was using. Uh, so I'm trying to protect protect the surface of this a little bit. And actually, uh, this ironing board, I'm not really a huge fan of because there's metal underneath and the metal is burning my fabric a little bit. So I just have, I have my little kitty towel here to help protect that. Oh my gosh, some quilt shops rent out their AccuQuilts cutters uh, for like $10 a day. Oh, that's so interesting. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Cute. I like this. I like this green dot with the green. I don't know, sparkly camo. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this uh, shiny green one that I like. I think I'm still doing them all to the dark side. I've kind of, I don't know, maybe zoned out on on that. But I think I'm still doing pressing them to the dark side. Almost done with this group. I bet you it is 90. I bet you we're actually ironing 90 of these today. <laughs> if I did my math right. I'm excited though. After this, we get to start pairing them, pairing them up, and I think that's going to be one of the most fun parts of making all these units. Oop, here we are. Here's a new, a new grouping. I think these two go together well because this is like gold sparkles and this is like gold ink or something. And the other ones are all kind of more a, like a silver. So we're mixing silver and gold and uh, green and blues together for this. This quilt. Oh, you have other shapes with your egg quilt. You made a small ironing board for your table because I got annoyed with the huge ironing boards. Oh, I'm with you. You know what? Um, I was thinking about getting one of those, just those big square kind of pads type ironing boards. Um, just because, yeah, this is, I don't know. Maybe I do like that, that it's raised up, but some of those ironing boards that are like that nice big square, that would work better for me then. You know, just this amount of space. Oh, this is starting to feel small, this pile. That's exciting. <laughs> so my husband came home yesterday, while I, or not yesterday, but uh, a couple days ago, while I was doing my uh, this my live stream here, and he was outside and. Uh, I have lights on, like uh, like video lights, and he said that it was so bright. Oop, that's the wrong side. Bright in the window, and he looked closer, and he said that our window was covered with June bugs that were attracted to the light. <laughs> so there may be giant June bugs just like three feet from us on the other side of this glass, which freaks me out. But I've been thinking about that. He took a photo of it too, and I've just been thinking about these June bugs now. Oh, your uh, cutting board? Like your, or not cutting board, your square, your, uh, um, Amy, your, uh, your ironing thing you can cut on the other side? That's kind of ones that are both, um, that are, you can iron on one side and flip it over and cut on the other. I think that'd be really good for, for traveling or just to put away really quickly, which is important too. Oh man, we're getting there, guys. 
we got a bunch of time yet. We, we'll still get to sewing yet today. One step at a time. So tomorrow we'll probably, I don't know if we'll get these all sewn tonight, but I think we'll get a decent amount sewn. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, which is Thursday, we will try and finish up whatever sewing of the blocks, and then we will start, start pressing. Or not pressing, start trimming, I mean. You open the window near me for better light and you feel like the neighbors, oh, I think I'm spying on him. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I feel like that sometimes here, too. <laughs> I always wonder what the, the neighbors think I'm doing every night <laughs> at this time because these lights are really bright and they're a really kind of blue light. So uh, from the outside, it just looks like we have the shades um, closed, but they're kind of a light muslin shade. And, and it just glows like it's lighting neon, the, the little dining room kitchen area here. And uh, I just feel like neighbors must think like, what are they doing in there? What are those weird lights that they have going on? Sometimes they ask, <laughs> like, uh, not about the lights, but they know that my husband does film stuff and, you know, it comes up that I do this live stream on Facebook and you, it's just totally a blank stare. <laughs> they, they can't realize that all of us get together here and we sew together and we can chit chat and whatever all, all over um, Facebook and live. It, they, it's just complete. And you know that we're quilters and crafters and all that. I don't think people realize how big of a group makers are. I guess makers in general. Oh, you made a, an ironing table with a uh, with a TV stand. That is a, that sounds like a great idea, Pam. Then it could just be right by you too. Ooh, I like that. A lot. Oh, your, <laughs> your sewing machine is in front of a window facing the road. Oh. <laughs> I'm just reading your, your comment. Uh, your sewing machine's by the window, so you're always kind of looking out and uh, your neighbor. <laughs> It's across the street, just looking in at you. Oh no, Cora, that's a bummer. I'm sorry it's not working tonight. It seems pretty random uh, when and who and how it works every night. Like one night it'll be working pretty well for everyone, and one night it won't be working for half of half of um, you guys, and then, then, you know, half the time it's not working for me, and, you know, adding one more half, even though that doesn't, there's not a half left, but uh, then it doesn't work for like, other half of people, so I don't know. Ooh, this is a pretty combo. And, you know, with Facebook updating all the time and all our phone systems and stuff, it's hard to keep up with all. Murray Stark Quilt has a tutorial on how to make an ironing surface. I might have to look into that. That might be a fun project, actually, for us to do here, because I'm sure everyone would be interested in sewing surface alternatives. And I know, like, like I was saying earlier, my my uh, uh, new ironing board here it has that metal that burns my fabric, so I wouldn't mind at least adjusting. Or, I don't know. It'd be fun. I would. I would watch. Watch what Miss Missouri Star has to say about. Say about that. Uh, we're getting down there. I think we probably only have like ten or so left here. Also, we are getting there. <laughs> you 
the stack is crazy. I thought it would look like uh, look like less once I open them up like this, but it looks the pile is huge. I'll, I'll show you guys in a sec here. Oh yeah, Sherry, I would love to see. Post it in uh, the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Do your ironing board. Does the fabric top come off of the ironing board? I looked, it's kind it looks like it might be able to, but I have to I kinda have to release the tie a little bit. Like I, I think I can if I cut the a knot out and then I think I can release it. But I would have to restring it or something maybe. I forget. I, I remember I looked at it pretty recently. Oh man, this might be my favorite combo. I do like those two together. Oh, we already have that combo. We made one with that combo already. I, I like it. I think I just really like this blue kind of fluttery leafy fabric. The silver, silver dots. It's pretty. This one really looks pressed already, but we'll press it again. We got like five more here. Oh, one of the updates, you lost notifications. You think of it fixed. So I, I noticed today, too, that notifications, I think they're in a, a different spot than they used to be. So if you are on, if you are at Penguin and Fish, which is where this video is, you're most likely watching this. Well, no, this could be in your feed, too. But if you go to Penguin uh, space ampersand space fish, that is my Penguin and Fish page, which is different than the Penguin and Fish Crafters private group, the Penguin and Fish page, that's where you can click like to um, like the page, and then right next to the like button, there's a, I think, a following button, and if you click on that, there's a pull down, and then in there, you can, um, it'll say, do you want notifications on, and then you make sure that that's got a check mark by it. So I think that's the new place for it. Or at least I don't remember it being there before, but I, I was looking into it today and, and that's where it was. Um, I might need to, you know, I, I share how to do the notifications on my post here, uh, my post text, I might need to update that. I'm gonna have to, it might still be that way for a phone, but um, yeah, on a laptop it seems different. Here's the last one, last quarter square triangle. All right, now we can sort. That is the last one. All right, I'm gonna shimmy you guys down again. Hoo wee, away from that hot iron. All right, but look at this stack. I gotta pick it up just so you guys can see how thick it is. Look, it's massive. <laughs> All right, guys, next step uh, is I wanna, I, I need to put them in two groups. I wanna put them in the groups of light and dark, uh, so we'll just keep going with there until I find a different one. These are all light to dark. Oh, now here's another one. This is the dark to light. So see, it's kind of a mirror image. I need them separate. What temp am I ironing on? Do you have a piece with metallic? Oh, that's, I, I haven't thought about that. Um, I'm ironing on probably the full, yeah, I'm, I'm ironing on the full heat, The linen cotton setting. Uh, so yeah, that's quite a bit. Um, I haven't noticed, I mean, I haven't observed really anything happening with my metallics as far as um, anything goes, so I don't think it's hurting my, my, uh, my metallics right now. This one's a tricky one because this isn't necessarily a light and dark, but you know, I didn't start out with three perfect lights and three perfect darks. So this this particular combo is a little tricky. Hey guys, so I'm back on. We're trying this again tonight here. Uh, hopefully the phone cooled down a little bit. Now that's away from the iron. Uh, so, all right, let's get back to it. I am going to start sorting. All right, I finished sorting the little squares here, uh, or the triangles, so let's keep going with that. And again, if you guys are just coming in now to this video, we are working on 
hourglass blocks just like this one and we have some that they are combined uh, the same colors with them so that this is the next part that we're going to do now is kind of picking what goes with what uh, I sorted it in the last video so check that out and again if you're new my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits I see you guys popping back in Let's give it a go. Uh, hopefully it will be okay. If it does cut out again, I'll probably just hold off for tomorrow night. And you know what? It's weird. I, I got this particular phone because my last one was overheating uh, quite a bit. So I wonder, wonder what's going on with this one if I need to call Apple Care or something. But we'll see. Oh, now it's working on your iPad again. Just, I don't know. Technology is silly. So, all right, guys, let's get back to it. I'm going to flip you around. There we go. Okay, back to it. So I did finish my stack here. So this is kind of illustrates the idea more. So this is the light and dark stack, and this is the dark and light stack. So I'm going to just set one of these completely aside, um, and I'm only going to work with ones where all of them are light and all of them are dark. So all right, to start out, remember I said that I wanted to have at least one perfect combo for all of the combos. And what I mean is I wanted one where like these are both blue or these are the both the same fabric and these are both the same fabric. Kind of like this too. These are the both the same and these are both the same. I want one like that, like these two, for every combo that we made. And then all of the rest I want to shimmy sham around like this where they're all different. So I think what I'm going to do first is gather my um, two of each so I can them together like this. I already have these two so I don't need those so I just need to kind of go over the rest of the pairings and let's see there should be we did 12 pairings so there should be 10 more so I'm gonna just go like this we're just gonna lay out all the combinations all right here we go this is we got both of these so I don't need any more of those all the rest I'm gonna just all the rest of these ones I'm going to just set aside. Uh, this pairing we already did right here, so I don't need any of those. Oh, here's more of, here's the other one of this. So, all right, now these two are good. So I don't need any more of them. Oh, here's a new pairing. Oh, no, right there. All right, so we have three out of our ten pairings. Here's a new one. Yeah, this one's new. So, all right, let's, this is the one we already have. All right, here we go. That one's done. Uh, this one we already have. This one we already have now. Green and green we already did. This one we already have as well. Ooh, it must have, have different ones at the bottom here, hopefully. Here we go, this is a new one. Um, blue and the white there. I got two right away there. These are our perfect pairs. All right. Uh, ooh, this one's pretty. Green and blue. We got our pair right there. Oh good, I'm, I'm working now for, for some people that it wasn't working before. Isn't that silly? I don't get it. Okay, this one we haven't done yet. Two. Where are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There should be three more. This one I don't think we have. This one we did already. Green and oh we didn't do that. Oh yeah, this one we have up top right. This is a new one though. Green and a swirl. I guess we got two of those. Green and swirl. And then this. Oh we only have um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, maybe we only had 10 pairs. Is that right? I thought we had 12, 12 pairings. We, yeah, because we had six. Oh, man, I'm all confused now. Well, I suppose we just double check here. Okay. So these are the ones that I have. All right, I have. 
this song. Yep. Green and swirl. Oh yeah, we have that one already. We did that. We did that one. Oh, eight. One, two. I'm confused now that we only have this many combos. This one. That one's right there. Because the other stack is the same, so um, just the flip, so that's not going to matter for us as far as combos. Got this one, this one. Maybe there are only um, are only this many combos. I don't know. Well, we'll just keep going. Just double check these. Oh, yeah, that blue one. And swirl. All right, so I think we have the combos that we have. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Gosh, that seems odd, doesn't it? But well, that's what we got. So, or maybe it doesn't seem wrong because we had uh, three combos, three different ways. That would be nine, right? That's math, right? <laughs> so I think these are our perfect combos. So. Um, why don't we just sew these perfect combos and get them out of the way? And then what I'll do is, here's the stack of the rest. I want to swirl these all around, and um, I don't want any ones to be the same after this. So, but let's let's get these out of the way, just because I don't want to mess up our perfect ones. But it does, it totally makes sense that there's nine now that I'm you know thinking about it a little bit more logically. So, all right, six different or three different. Uh, Six fabrics, we combined um, them into two. So that's three, three different ways. All right, I'm gonna just grab from the top here. Since we did press them all to the dark side, I should, when I put them together like this, I should be able to nest the seams, which just means bumping up that fold against each other. And, you know, I'm just gonna hold that there. You can pin this or wonder clip it. But I'm going to just hold it there with my finger. My finger's going to act as the pin. And then we just need these edges together, and we should be good to go here. Yay, sewing! <laughs> it's fun when you get to this part. It feels productive. You're, you're assembling things together. So we're going to just chain piece these with the baby quilt. Uh, Felicia, I'll have to check. I was kind of MIA a little bit on email today. I'll check after this, though. I'll definitely, I'll definitely let you know. All right, next one. Ooh, I think this one's going to be really pretty. You know what? I think maybe we'll press these tonight, too just these few that I got going on here, because now that they're sewn, I can't just let them sit around. I think I need to see what they look like. So we'll press these, how many do I have? One, seven more. We'll press these seven tonight so we can see, so we can see all the combos that we have. Because these are the only like pure combos. All the other combos will be all mishmashed. Which I think will be fun. So it'll be all crazy patchworky, uh, except for you'll have to find like the perfect pairs throughout. I kind of like that idea. Oh, congrats, Felicia! I will check that out. That's fantastic news. Finishing up a, a project. And I do like nesting seams. So the reason that you nest the seams together like that is that you can get a perfect point in the middle if you nest the seams carefully. Oh, you're working on your first hourglass pattern. That's what I'm doing. First one. And like I said, it's kind of the first quilt where I'm just taking one block and making a pile of the same single blocks. It's comforting, kind of, actually. It's, it's nice to just do one step for a while and 
and you're completely moved on to the next step. You can kind of zone out a hair. I like it. Alright, hair enough. I like this combo too. Lost my nested seams. You can feel it though uh, when the, those folds bump up to each other. So I just I just moved the piece a little, and now I can feel it again. I always kind of pause when I'm in the seams that so that's holding both seams together right now. My needle down, and then I'm just lining up again before sewing the rest of the way. And really trying not to stretch because remember that 145 degree. Uh, angle is going to be really stretchy because we, we cut it um, at that 45 degree angle, um, that bias. That's what that 45 degree cut is called. Um, it's on the bias of the fabric, which is that diagonal, diagonal uh, edge, basically. And those diagonals are stretchier than the vertical and the horizontal. Yeah, all the ironing. So much ironing. Last one, guys. So uh, we will press this again. Hopefully, phone will get mad at me, but we're not going to press nearly as many. But I do. I'm too tempted to see what these look like. So we'll press these together, or press them open, rather, and then we'll call it a night after, after that see what these look like and then let me line this up again then tomorrow tomorrow we'll do all our wacky combos all our kind of random every which way combos okay let's trim oops sorry and oh I love when it's this long chain like this. Look, it looks like, like a little, uh, like a little banner, doesn't it? <laughs> Love it. Okay, let's trim these quick, and then we'll go up to the iron again. So we're going to do that little pinwheel um, way of pressing so that it lies a little flatter. There's our seven back up to the iron. Hopefully, uh, phone stays with us here. <laughs> if not, if the phone fizzles out again, then we will pick this up tomorrow. So I'm just giving it a little start to press. Ooh, look at that combo. And then let's do that little where we kind of open up that hole a little bit there. So we're getting that. By opening it up, we're getting that little, little kind of pinwheel there, and then we'll press this one to the other side. Keep this how we do these. All right, let's get the front. So it's kind of like pressing in a circle almost. It is stretchy and, and weird and flexible. I can I can feel that. So. This will get interesting once we sew all these together, but there we go, our first one. Look at it, now that's some lights and darks for sure. All right, let's keep going. It is getting warm again here though, I can tell by the iron. So hopefully we'll be okay. That's pretty. So sparkly. I love this, uh, just that cream with the gold sparkles in. So there we go. So you can see, you know, our perfect little points that's from nesting our seams together. Yay! All right, five more. Hopefully, oh gosh, look at this one. 
<laughs> I'm gonna just say I love every single one when it when it appears, but man, that green on green is cool. There we go. Let's see you again. Let's go just to the rest of the opposite direction. Oh, you just started cutting blocks of park. Oh no. There we go. I I dig that one. Wheel. I'll lay these all out, uh, assuming that we haven't froze. Um, there's three more, and assuming we haven't uh, conked out again, I will. I'll lay these all out so we can see all our perfect ones together. Ooh, this one's pretty too. This one's awfully winter feeling. Effect. This is just, you know, then our we don't have so many layers of seams, so in theory it would be a little thinner, but I just think that little pinwheel looks cool. See, there's a little pinwheel in the back there. Oh, and this is the front. Shiny. Two more. Ooh, I like this combo. This is my favorite green and my favorite blue together, I think. This is that one that's not really, neither is really a dark or a light. These are both kind of the same tone almost. You can tell the the value, same value, not, not tone. Uh, but you can tell the value, value, like if something's light or dark to each other, if you squint at colors. So like, let's look at this one, for example. Um, let me just press this side. If I squint at this, If I squint at it, it kind of turns it black and white. This is just a hair darker than this one. If you squint, you can kind of tell. Uh, I mean, clearly, you could tell a whole lot easier with this. If you squint, this looks like practically black, and this looks white. So clearly, this is a dark value compared to this value. But it's tough when you're when you're close like this. But I think the blue is still slightly darker. So I'm glad we went with that as a dark. And that green is a light. Oh, this one's cool. This one's so shiny. There's the last one here, too. There we go. Lay these out real quick. I don't think I got that out of the way. You kind of have to pull open the seam a little bit. You're, you're opening a few stitches to, to do this swirl. Okay, and there's our last one. Looking fun and shiny. So let's let's take a look. I want to kind of I'll lay all these out and then I'll I'll lift you guys up a hair. I want to see what they are starting to look like together. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lay them out kind of how I want as far as darks and lights. So I'm gonna go dark light and then light dark. So they're gonna all be kind of rotated. But I'm gonna just kind of grab at them. So dark light. Ooh, that's, that's neat. So let's just do that. I should have nine here. Um, light, dark, light. I'm trying to have ones that aren't so close to each other, next to each other, but I don't think we're going to get around that really. Um, light, dark. So let me lift you guys up here. So I just kind of started laying about, we'll throw this one in here too. 
So there we go. <laughs> Here's all our ones that we've done, the perfect ones, the ones that are the same on the each, each side, except for that guy. So these ones are the ones that will be hidden uh, within all the ones that are like this, all the different comboed ones. So I think it is looking neat. I'm excited to start um, seeing what they'll look like next to each other and stuff. It's going to be it's going to be interesting putting these all together, but it's starting to look like something, that's for sure. You're starting to see some of these lights in here, I think. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what the overall effect of this thing is. I'm pretty excited, though. So we got a whole, a whole pile of these closer to finished. Um, we do have all of these to pair up, so we will pair these up tomorrow and then and sew these. And then we have this whole other stack, remember, that I want to do kind of randomly as well. Um, so that's a lot to do yet uh, as far as number of blocks. So it'll be a complete sewing day tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. A sewing day and a reveal day. Like we'll get to reveal all these kind of fun, fun combos. So I'm excited. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. There. <laughs> so I'm glad this second time around worked a little bit better. I'm really kind of digging this one. So fun. So yeah, next we got all our stacks to do. So that's what we'll do tomorrow. Uh, Friday, I think I'll be going out of town, but I think I will still be able to uh, do our live stream on Friday. It will be on location at my parents' house again. So that'll be fun. We'll be continuing this, this, uh, hourglass quilt there. But this weekend, I'm also going to be sandwiching my Splendid Sampler quilt, and I'll be sure to take video and hopefully some live video of that as well. That'll be uh, probably, I don't know, between Saturday and Monday, I'm not sure. So one of those days, uh, I will be br breaking out the Splendid Sampler quilt again. We can look at the, the full back of that, and uh, I'll show you guys how I sandwich that together. So awesome! Uh, thanks again for being here. Again, if you aren't on the Penguin and Fish Crafters list, I did put the, or group rather, I put the link in this description here. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll put the description in there as well. And uh, if you haven't signed up to win this quilt, uh, be sure to do that as well. I'm going to be uh, uh, giving away this quilt when, when I'm done with it. So I'm excited. This is fun. Uh, I like it. <laughs> and again, share what you're working on in our Penguin and Fish Crafter Crafters group. I'd love to check it out. So good night. I will see you guys tomorrow.